everybody welcome back to my channel if this is your first time hey girl or guy <laughs> and if this is not your first time and you've been here before welcome back i'm so glad that you came back to join me today i actually want to shout out the fact that i haven't done a subscriber shout out in a long time and i think we just reached today like 1784 1785 something like that and like y'all oh my gosh how did our family grow so quickly like what this is crazy so hey to all the new people i wish i could look you up unfortunately i can't see on my phone um the names of the subscribers that have subscribed recently as long as you're public you know i can only see those who subscribe if your page is public um so maybe i'll be a subscriber and shout out in one of the next videos but shout out to y'all so today we're doing another episode on safe single left behind and if you don't know about this series and this is your first one that you've kind of dropped in on this is actually me talking about all these different facets of my single life I have a little bit of a unique story being that um, I was single for 25 years and so that journey had all kinds of things growing up you know going through high school and middle school and college and all of these things with um, not having a relationship never having a boyfriend not knowing what that was like never even having my first kiss um, so if you want to know all about that and like the initial testimony that kind of initiated this whole series make sure you go check that video out Oh, oh, by the way, y'all, I decided to be in my pajamas today because it's actually late. And after I record this, I might edit it tonight or I might edit it in the morning. I might be hopping in a bit. So, yeah, I'm here in my pajamas. Take me as you will. <laughs> but today's topic, I, I mean, you saw by the title, Confident Singleness versus Toxic Independence. And toxic independence is kind of a concept that I hit on a little bit in that first video um, and even in some of the other uh, episodes throughout the series. But I really want to focus today on this idea of being a misindependent, this independent person and how it's so easy for us to fall into that trap, especially those of us who have been single all of our lives and that's all we know. And we just kind of get comfortable in that singleness and in that independence. So um, I actually did a blog post on this two years ago. It was 2017, I believe. Let me look it up. Um, I had it pulled up. So yeah, March 8th, 2017. I did a uh, article on my website, on my blog, called Miss Independent, a title with a cost. And y'all, that article is probably one of the most popular articles that I've written um, on my blog. Like that one just kind of blew up. And it's funny because in it I mentioned Neo's uh, Miss Independent song, which came out in 2008. And I don't know why, but that song did something to me, y'all. Like, it just did something to me. I mean, I was coming out of eighth grade in 2008, moving into high school. And something about the message of that song was just like, I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's it. I'm going to be a Miss Independent. And at the time, I don't think I adopted the Miss Independent initially out of spite. Um, although, I developed it out of spite, for sure, like later on down the line. But anyway, something about like how he talks in the lyrics. Let me let me read them. He was like, she walk like a boss, talk like a boss, manicure and nails instead of pedicure off. She flies effortlessly. She moves like a boss, do what a boss do. She got me thinking about getting involved. That's the kind of girl I need. She got her own thing, that's why I love her, Miss Independent. Ooh, the way you shine, Miss Independent. And so I was like, I think initially in my mind, I was like, okay, so guys are looking for these independent women. Like, if I'm this boss independent woman who can take care of myself, get my own manicures and pedicures, and can own my own things, do my own thing, and be a boss, then that's marketable in the dating sense. So that's actually originally why I adopted Mr. Neo's <laughs> philosophy about Miss Independent. But as I grew up and like I said, went through high school and definitely college and was realizing like, oh, okay, I'm not getting the same play as other people. I'm getting the opportunity to experiment with the dating world. Like I'm not, I'm not getting that, I'm not getting that kind of attention. So then it became like, okay, well I'm just about to be the biggest boss there is and invest in myself and be independent and I don't need this like okay I'm not gonna get to play I don't need it like I mentioned in the first video one of my coping strategies was making jokes about me and relationships so like I could crack on my singleness like oh my gosh like you wouldn't believe like I mastered it I became the Kevin Hart of joking about singleness the laughter just kind of it just kind of helped me deal but then the other thing is, like I said, with this independence. So in high school, I really was getting super involved in how this 
this leadership experience and began to really just like tap into my destiny. And so with that, it was like, I was feeding my head with this idea of like independence and I don't need a man. So that was a running joke in college. Like I would say multiple times to people like, I don't need a man, I would make jokes about it. Um, I remember I moved, um, I had to move dorms at one point and I did it all by myself and I was bragging. I think I put it on Instagram actually, like in, in the uh, description or in the caption, um, put like, you know, hashtag don't need a man because I had done it all by myself and it's just like, girl, you're doing too much. Like, <laughs> you're doing too much. Like, we get it. Okay, you're independent. You don't need a man. Got it. Great. So again, that was my way of like just growing comfortable in my singleness. And the thing is, being content in your singleness is a positive thing. That's actually something that a lot of people talk about. But being content in your singleness looks very different from what I was doing. <laughs> okay, being content in your singleness looks like, okay, I trust God and his destiny. He knows what's ahead. Like, he, I'm trusting that I will walk this path and at the right time, God already will orchestrate the opportunity for me to delve into relationship with someone in a healthy way. Like, I trust God on that. I can have healthy conversations about relationships with my friends and family. Um, I'm acknowledging that I still have a desire for a partner, a man in my life. That is content in singleness. Me, I was pretty much the opposite of all that. So I wouldn't talk about relationships unless somebody else brought it up. I wasn't talking about relationships with God. I was very much feeding myself through the story of, I could go my whole life without a man. I don't need a man, I'm good. I take care of myself, I pay my own bills, I got my own apartment. I'm good, I'm straight, I don't need a man. Like, I don't need you to do anything for me. I'ma just handle this thing myself. And so it really became this toxic independence, this, um, feeding myself these stories and these lies because y'all the, the truth of the matter is the desire is still there deep down under all of these kind of lies that I've told myself deep down I knew that I did desire a relationship I did desire partnership I did desire to be supported and loved through a relationship like that but I was just a little bit spiteful I was spiteful a little bit at God of like now you see me down here having no experience at all you mean to tell me I can't get one little some some little date a little something like what so it became unhealthy like I was holding so tightly to my singleness that it became a part of my identity and our relationship status y'all is not a part of our identity we are a person outside of our relationship status but like me being single was like that's gaby the single person the independent girl the boss woman who doesn't need a man like that was like my tagline almost like i was so i was clinging tightly to my singleness to the point where the idea of somebody coming along was like huh like i mean do i want that yes but like why like at the end of the day nah i'm good i'm straight like allowing somebody else in requires vulnerability it requires me to let down my guard it requires me to release some control and all of that is not in line with the lyrics of neo and what he described as a miss independent woman <laughs> like no like this idea also became pretty popular i know definitely with social media of i want a man i don't need him and so making sure that a man knew like yeah you're disposable almost you know kind of having that narrative it would be nice to have you around but at the end of the day i don't need you and i get why we would tell people that but at the end of the day you can't walk into a relationship with the idea of this is disposable with one foot out the door so i'm not really gonna invest in it at the end of the day i just want you i don't need you so you know i could live without this so i don't really need like that mindset is not conducive to a partnership into a relationship so again this toxic independence was really a coping strategy that became something that was standing in the way of me being able to even tap into the idea of a relationship. And so similar to what I was talking about in the Good Girl Syndrome video, um, I was saying how, you know, with sex, that's something that, um, you know, if we push it away for so long, so long because of messages from the church and everywhere, and then we get married and it's supposed to be like a switch that flips on and oh, now everything's okay, but that's not how it happens. Like, it's not at all. Like, you have remnants of these lives that you've told yourself about sex for years and so then that to me is very similar to this message with toxic independence in that I've told myself I don't need a man I don't need relationships I'm good by myself I can do it by myself all of that I've told myself all of that and then when the opportunity comes for someone to kind of present themselves as a potential partner and you know try to 
tried to do for me and to show support and be vulnerable and like do all the things that partners do like in a partnership in a relationship that's what they're supposed to do but my wallet up I can't receive those things Miss Independent is deep for me and I've allowed it to kind of spiral out of control to the point where I really can't allow somebody to do for me um, and I would say even at one point was bleeding out into relationships outside of just a uh, guy. I'm recording. Okay. No, what are you doing? It's fine. I can pause it. Okay, sorry y'all, slight interruption. I just want you to know how ridiculous it is that we're really out here telling ourselves that we have to be these independent boss women. And like, can we talk about the mental health aspect of that? It is so unhealthy for us to be taking on this boss mentality as if we have to be A1, you know, these boss women who take care of ourselves and do for ourselves and we don't need anybody. If, if we do end up allowing you in our lives, it's just because we want you there, but you're disposable. Like, that is so toxic. And like I said, for most of us, I'm assuming that at the end of the day, we really do want relationships. We want that companionship. We want that support. Um, we want to have that kind of a presence there, but it's almost got to a point where like, we don't know how to allow something like that in our lives. So I think it's very important for those of us who do eventually want that, we have to start addressing this toxic independence now. If you recognize it and any of the things I say in this video are kind of ringing a bell with you and you're like, ooh, I think that might be me. That sounds similar to some of the things that I do. Start addressing that now. Start challenging yourself now to let go of this Miss Independent Boss Woman at All Times Perfect title and this tagline and this pressure that we put on ourselves. Let that go. When somebody offers to help or to support you in a way that they feel led to do because they love you and out of relationship with you, allow them to do that. You know, start to train yourself. You really have to work backwards. It's not an overnight thing. You can't just flip on a switch and it, it's gonna disappear, which I'm learning that now in this stage of my life. And it's a tough lesson to learn when you're like in the arena, when there is somebody there who is like, persistently wanting to show you that support and to be a partner and to do all of these things. So I guess my ultimate message for you guys is I wanna make sure that you are not allowing your singleness to become uh, a part of your character. You know what I'm saying? Like our relationship status is not at all linked to our character, to who we are as a person. It is just a status. That's literally just what it is. You're either in a relationship or you're not. You know what I'm saying? Or it's complicated according to Facebook. But it, like it's either or. So it's not really something that should be defining your character. You are you. Be you, be that person, invest in yourself, do all those great things. But don't allow this singleness to become a part of your identity to the point where you're so comfortable in it that you would choose that over companionship. That you would choose that over allowing yourself to be vulnerable vulnerable and open and in a relationship. So yeah, I'm hoping I said everything that I felt like I needed to say with this. Um, if you want to check out that blog post, I will put the link in the description box so you can go read a little bit more about kind of what I was talking about with just that Miss Independent and how it really is a title with a cause. Just put your reactions down in the comment section, your stories if you have a similar situation that you're dealing with um, or are on a similar journey with letting go of that Miss Independent boss woman singleness as part of your identity make sure you like this video if you enjoyed this and also if you really enjoyed this series and you're looking forward to what's to come make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of the future videos in this series and all the other things that are posted on my channel thanks for hanging out with me today and i will see you guys in the next video bye